argument that uh, having simple common rules for businesses within the European Union would help the United States. So I think uh, in this narrative we can already see that there's uh, a very different uh, um, different view on, on the role of the United States uh, in this copyright debate where we have uh, advocates for a more open system in the US uh, uh, arguing against the US government which is supposedly in the European Union pushing for the same uh, uh, liberalization of the copyright regime. So I think this really shows how uh, important it is to actually have these exchanges uh, uh, from different um, cultural backgrounds and legal backgrounds to really see that uh, a lot of these uh, um, scare tactics that uh, sometimes come up in the, in the copyright debate are really uh, rather baseless. And uh, a second point that uh, has uh, struck me uh, during the keynote is uh, this idea that we shouldn't confuse uh, the, the benefits of what is being done with the possibility of what could be done. Because um, the uh, copyright debate in the, at the European level at the moment when we know that there is going to be a copyright reform and the question is really uh, what it is going to contain is that a lot of the debate is about risks. So uh, which industries are we going to destroy if we change the rules? Uh, how, how much money are artists going to lose from any kind of reform? So it's a debate that is focusing much more on the risk of action than on the risk of inaction. Because um, I think from, from a lot of the fundamental shifts in, in the creative uh, sector that we've already seen through digital technology, it's certainly uh, uh, not a, a reasonable approach to think that if only we keep the laws the same way it is, uh, the industries are going to stay the same way they are. So the um, technological change is happening and uh, some people are going as far as to say that progress happens despite politics. Um, this brings me in a, in a very uh, interesting situation. It's also one of the reasons why I find this particular panel so interesting because it is talking about innovation and it is presenting uh, projects that are already working with uh, open uh, business models or with models that are perhaps even outside of the traditional economy. Um, but uh, the, the question as a policy maker that I'm going to have to ask myself is how can we make these emerging uh, uh, business models, uh, the startups have the same uh, voice that traditional larger industries that have had political contests to the highest levels for decades, how can we make these new open models uh, be heard in the political debate? And um, I, uh, it basically comes down to the, to the question, okay, if we have innovation that is happening despite policy, in politics, under which circumstances can politics actually uh, reinforce that and um, uh, under which circumstances can we um, as European policy makers actually uh, realize that there is an advantage in fostering uh, open policies. So uh, I'm really hoping that we can touch upon some of uh, these questions in the debate today and really find practical examples of uh, areas where open innovation is already working and uh, discuss how we can bring this message to policymakers in the European Parliament, in, in the Commission, but also crucially in the member states uh, to generate some momentum for this reform. Uh, in the discussion just now, somebody was mentioning the work of the uh, UK Intellectual Property Office. And here I think we had a relatively good example of a, a modestly progressive copyright reform, which has uh, um, enabled uh, new possibilities, for example, in the area of text and data mining or has allowed some parodies that were not uh, uh, allowed under copyright law before. And uh, I think it's interesting to look at under which circumstances these changes happened. And one of the uh, important factors has already been mentioned is uh, the evidence-based approach. Uh, as policymakers, we are very often in the, uh, in the situation that we are confronted with numbers and studies that are directly brought to us by the industry, but uh, in order to counter these arguments and uh, to make sure that uh, they do not just get accepted as facts, we need to have an alternative. We need to have a peer-reviewed study that is on the same subject and that is uh, giving a different picture. So one of the examples of that is uh, 
IP-intensive industries, basically saying uh, IP-intensive industries employ 40% of the workforce. And then when you look at the definition, you find that their definition of IP-intensive industry is an industry that relies upon intellectual property more than average. So basically, by definition, 50% of all industries are IP-intensive, and they employ 40% of the workforce. That's actually not very impressive. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I, I think this, uh, this uh, is definitely something that uh, the European Union should encourage, and that also projects uh, like this should encourage, that we actually do these studies, create the numbers that we can use uh, to, to have a fact-based argument. And I think another a uh, crucial aspect uh, in, the, in the UK reform and also something where we are seeing at least sides of it on a European level is the question of political will and political leadership. If you don't have uh, people at the highest political levels who are actually seeing this potential of something like, like the data mining, for example, and saying, okay, this is something where uh, we can also create an economic advantage, then it's going to be extremely difficult uh, to, to really make a progressive reform rather than fixing really little things uh, in the copyright regime where everybody agrees that uh, they are not working. So, um, yeah, I think uh, uh, coming from the pirate parties, uh, having managed in several European countries to get people to actually take copyright policy as seriously as a, poli uh, as a political issue that they're willing to base their uh, voting decision on this issue is really crucial and I think it's something that is showing that, uh, well, the, the effects of having a broken uh, copyright or IP system are really uh, about the overall health of the economy, about uh, the preservation of culture, about uh, global health, and uh, about global uh, social justice at the end of the day. So I think we do need to make this uh, 